let's now try to see how the time scale was defined from the oldest definition to the most recent definition. And the oldest definition of a time scale comes from Arduino, an Italian stratigrapher, who around 1759 came up with a subdivision that you might be familiar with. He called the oldest rock, which were crystalline rocks, the primitive rocks. Then on top of this, he recognized in Italy um, some fossiliferous strata that contain detritus from older rock. He called this the secondary strata. And then at the very top, he found some sediment, so poorly consolidated sand and gravel, and he called this the tertiary strata. So this was a very simple subdivision of the rock record, and the names primary, secondary, and tertiary have actually survived for quite a long time. When I was a, an undergrad student, we still talked about primary, secondary, and tertiary strata. And tertiary, to some extent, is still used today. Then Werner, in the late 1700s, came up with a more complex subdivision, where he recognized the primitive series, which were crystalline rocks. So he thought, interestingly, at the time that these crystalline rocks represented the first chemical precipitate in the ocean. He did not realize that these were actually plutonic rocks. And then he recognized a transition ser series, which was strongly stratified rocks. And then the stratified series that was more obviously stratified with fossiliferous uh, content. And then at the top of this, he recognized the transported series, which were poorly consolidated clay, sand, and gravel. And finally, he recognized that in his particular region, there was a lot of volcanoes that were younger, so he called this the volcanic series. So you can see that both Arduino and Werner really use lithostratigraphy to subdivide the rock record and actually regional lithostratigraphy. And a lot of their subdivisions are based on whether the sediment is indurated or not. So it is a very simple subdivision and you can guess that its ability to be useful for correlation is pretty low. Now, modern stratigraphy really started in the 19th century, and Charles Lyell's in the 1830s can be credited for coming up with the first stratigraphic time chart that looks remotely modern. He defined in this stratigraphic time chart terms such as the Carboniferous, the Lias, the Cretaceous, and even the tertiary period, which are still actually used today. And we've talked, when we talked about chronostratigraphy, that later on in the 1870s, he refined his subdivision using proportion of uh, fossils, and he basically uh, published a stratigraphic uh, time chart that now looks relatively modern, where we have the Cambrian, Silurian, and Devonian of Cedric and Murchison. And on top of this, he has the Permian, Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous, and the Tertiary. So these terms are still used today, but with different definitions. And then this time chart evolves even in the 20th century, because the term primary and secondary are abandoned in the middle of the 20th century in favor of Paleozoic and Phanerozoic. C'est pas vrai. In favor of the term Phanerozoic, which can be divided into Paleozoic and Mesozoic and Cenozoic, which are more recent uh, terminology. And even in the 21st century, there's even more changes where essentially the term tertiary is abandoned as a, an official terminology in the stratigraphic time chart. So one key concept for stratigraphy from the 19th century to kind of today is this idea of a stratotype. A stratotype is a type locality in which you can define a stage. So historically, you would go to a location like Murchison and Cedric have done, and you'd say, ah, this is my Silurian. This is the stratotype of the Silurian, which means that every other rock in the world have to be compared to that stratotype, that golden section, if you want, so that you can say, ah, yes, it looks like the Silurian, or yes, it looks like the Devonian, be it in terms of its fossil content, its, its rock properties, or its isotopic uh, content. So let's look at what stratotypes are and what the problem with stratotypes also are. So here you have a, a picture of the Maastrichtian stratotype. It's the ENCI cement quarry. 
But the issue is if you look at the stratigraphic time chart, which I'm showing you here from the Paleocene all the way to the Oligocene. So this is the modern time chart. And if you plot next to it, the different stratotype, so these are all the historical stratotype that have helped to define those stages. So the, the different stages that you can see here, like the Danian, Selandian, Tanesian, Eprasian, etc. Well, what's immediately visible is that there is a lot of gap, that the actual rock record that, that uh, exists does not cover all of the time. And this is something that should not surprise you. Most of those stratotypes are defined in shallow water continental sections. So they're not deep water deposits. And shallow water sections are characterized by unconformity. We've seen how we can use unconformity in terms of sequence stratigraphy. But if you try to define a time scale, what you want is continuous sedimentation with no gaps. And this simply does not exist. So the very concept of stratotype that has been used for at least a century is flawed at its core and we need something better. And that thing better is known as a GSSP, a global stratotype section and point. And in orange here, I show you conceptually what a GSSP would be. The idea is quite simple. Instead of trying to define a stratotype that comprises all of the interval of time that you want to represent, you find a section that is continuous where you don't have any gap, but that section can be short because all you want to define is the base of a stage. So you don't try to define the entire stage, you just try to define the boundary between two stages and you define the base of the stage above. And that's much easier to do. So here's the GSSP for the base of the Danian stage. So that's the base of the uh, Paleogene or the, the base of the Cenozoic, if you want. And this thin red line is that GSSP, that global stratotype section and point. And point really refers to the fact that you have this imaginary line that is infinitely thin that separates the two stages. And so on top of that red line is the base of the Danian. And that section comprises that, that uh, transition from the Cretaceous to the Danian completely. And again, the beauty of GSSPs is that they're much easier to define because you can find continuous sections. And if you look at the modern stratigraphic time chart, this is a recent version from the International Commission for Stratigraphy or ICS website. You can go and download these uh, for free you will see that each one of these stages or a lot of these stages have a golden spike, like for instance, here at the base of the Holocene. That golden spike indicates that the GSSP has been defined. So we have a convention for defining the base of that particular stage. So let's look at some examples of defining GSSPs.